Good evening. I hope all your Christmas shopping is finished. We don't have a 7-Eleven locally, but they're probably open. Couldn't tell you. It was be good to be in the house of the Lord. You know, I, I was talking to someone this week, and they said, we have the baby Jesus in the manger. Is that okay? I said, I guess so. Well, he's, she says he hadn't arrived yet. I said, you're a little late in the story here. <laughs> Over you know, a long, long time ago. But I'm glad he did come for us. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time to celebrate. To give us real joy you came to this world. Lord, may we be filled with the joy of the Lord. May we show and live in the presence of Christ. To our world who needs to see a, a, a Prince of Peace and a Savior. Who is really Jesus Christ the Lord. Thank you for being with us tonight. Help us as we sing and praise you. Lord, may we give honor to our King of kings and Lord of lords. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going we're to sing a little while. Robin has a song. I have to share a little message. And you didn't know, but you, did, you, brought, you brought some of the basic parts like your heart. And if our heart opens up to the Lord, we're, we're doing great. Hymn number 65 says, It came upon the midnight clear, and, and it was pretty clear tonight. I don't know exactly all the things that were going on. I'm sure it wasn't a rainy night. The shepherds may have not been as alert and the wise men couldn't have seen a star. But hymn number 65, it came upon the midnight clear. It came upon the midnight clear. Yeah, it saw a thumb from angels bending near. Their harps of gold, peace on the earth, good will to men from curves of gracious king. The world in solemn stillness lay to hear the angels sing. Still through the cloven skies they come with peaceful wings unfurled. And still their heavenly music floats o'er all the weary worm. Above its sad and lowly plains, a band on covering wing. And ever o'er its babble sounds, the blessed angels sing. And ye beneath life's crushing. Lord, whose forms are bending long, who toil along the climbing way with painful steps and slow. Look now for glad and golden hours come swiftly on the wing. All rest beside the weary road and hear the angels sing. And lo, the days are hastening on by prophet thoughts foretold. When with the ever circling years comes round the age of gold. When peace shall over all the earth its ancient splendor sling. And the whole world give back the song. Which now the angels sing. And so we started out with a night. You know, the world was in a nighttime kind of, well, mode. And uh, it was a dark time. Probably 400 years the last between the prophecies of Zechariah in the Old Testament till the events that happened that Matthew records. And there was a long, 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 long time, longer than the United States has been around. They were hoping for a Messiah. And then word got out. A baby was born. Hymn number 62 
says angels from the realms of glory. They're coming to tell us something. They're the messengers of God. Angels are the messengers of God. And they are proclaiming the good news. Hymn number 62, Angels from the Realms of Glory. Angels from the realms of glory wing your flight o'er all the earth. Ye whose sang creation story now proclaim Messiah's birth. Come and worship, come and worship, worship Christ the newborn King. Shepherds in the fields abiding, watching o'er your flocks by night. God with man is now residing, yonder shines the infant light. Come and worship, come and worship, worship Christ the newborn King. Sages, leave your contemplations, brighter visions beam afar. Seek the desire of nations ye have seen, natal star. Come and worship, come and worship, worship Christ the newborn King. Saints before the altar bending, watching long in hope and fear. Suddenly the Lord descending in his temple shall appear. Come and worship, come and worship, worship Christ the newborn King. I tell you what, and that was an invitation. You know, the Godfather was noted for, I'm going to make you an offer you can't refuse. But you know, the Heavenly Father he made us an offer we ought not to refuse. To come and worship. Not because not we have to, but because we choose to. And you know, when we do worship the Lord and we open our heart to Him, it changes everything. It changes our perspective. It changes everything. Well, we'll sing hymn number 66. Hark the herald angels sing. Glory to the newborn king. Hymn number 66. Hark the herald angels sing. Hark the herald angels sing Glory to the newborn King Peace on earth and mercy mild God and sinners reconciled Joyful all ye nations rise Join the triumph of the skies With the angelic host proclaim Christ take is born in Bethlehem. Hark the old angels sing. Glory to the newborn King. Christ by highest heaven adored. Christ the everlasting Lord. Late in time behold him come. Offspring of a virgin's womb. Veiled in flesh the God can see, Hail the incarnate deity, Pleased to men with men to appear, Jesus our Emmanuel here, Hark the herald angels sing, Glory to the newborn King, Hail the heaven, Lord Prince of Peace, Son of righteousness, light and life to all he brings, risen with healing in his wings. Mild he lays his glory by, born that man no more may die. Born to raise the sons of earth, born to who give them second birth. I the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn King. Come, desire of nations, come, fix and us thy humble home. Rise, O woman's conquering seed, root in us 
the serpent's head. Adam's like the snarly face, the brilliant image in its place. Second on from above, reinstate us in thy luck. Hark, the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn king. And you know, it is so true. Hark, the herald angels sing. Well, I would like you to turn back to page 496. We're going to just share just a little bit. It's a, just a, a, a passage from John, and then we'll sing a little bit more. A passage of John about the incarnation, about the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, and it's uh, responsive reading number 28. It gives us a different perspective. Tonight I'm going to be sharing from the book of Matthew, but when I was preparing for this, I said, you know, this responsive reading tells us, well, uh, shall we say, the rest of the story. Then we'll, later on, we're going to share the one from Luke as well. But uh, responsive reading number 28, it calls the incarnation where Christ became flesh. And I'll read the first paragraph and then the next indentation you'll read together. And uh, we'll go back and forth that way. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. And the Word was God. The same was in the beginning. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear the witness of the light. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was made. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God. In our reading later on, we're going to read that Jesus' name was given to Joseph. And it says, and he will call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from from their sin, to as many as believed, to those folks, he gave the rights to become, well, we get the choice to believe, don't we? I'm glad for that. Hymn number 67, we're going to sing Silent Night. Would you stand with me? I'll let you stand for this one. How's that? Silent Night, Holy Night. Silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright, round yon virgin mother and child, holy infant so tender and mild, sleep. Silent night, holy night, shepherds quake at the sight, glory stream from heaven the fire, heavenly hosts sing Savior is born. Silent night, holy night, Son of God, love's pure light, radiant beams from thy holy face, and with the dawn of Jesus, Lord, at thy birth, Jesus, Lord. 
my bird Silent night Holy night All is dark Save the light Yonder where they sweet vigils keep O'er the babe who in silent sleep Rests in heavenly peace Rest in heavenly peace You may be seated. And as we continue our journey through this whole event, hymn number 71 says, O little town of Bethlehem. I, you know, Bethlehem just means the house of bread. I'm sure that they were not prepared for what was coming on. Joseph and Mary show up for a census and uh, so they weren't even uh, from town. They were going to live over in Nazareth. They were captured by surprise. So many times we're captured by surprise by the goodness of God. Hymn number 71, O Little Town of Bethlehem. O little town of Bethlehem, how still we see the light. Of all thy deep and dreamless sleep, the silent and stars go by. Yet in thine dark streets shine the everlasting light. The hopes and fears of all the years are met in thee tonight. For Christ is born of Mary and gathered all above. While mortals sleep, the angels keep their watch up of wandering love. O morning stars together proclaim the holy birth and praises sing to God the King and peace to man on earth. How silently, how silently the wondrous gift is given. So God imparts to human hearts the blessing of his head. No ear may hear his coming, but in this world of sin, where meek souls will receive him still, the dear Christ enters in. O holy child of Bethlehem, he sent to us we pray. Cast out our sin and enter in, be born in us today. We hear the Christmas angels, the great glad tidings tell. Oh, come to us, abide with us, our Lord Emmanuel. Well, the scripture tells us in two different passages about the birth of Christ beside the prophecies. You know, Isaiah records for us some things about this virgin who will conceive a child and he will be the Messiah and he will be a deliverer and a wonderful counselor and, and all the other descriptive words, but he came as a baby. Luke, a doctor, a physician, writes the book of Luke and also the book of Acts. And in the back of your hymnal on page 485 is the passage from Luke, the Christmas story, maybe from Mary's side a little bit. I don't know if... Obviously, Luke wasn't there, but he had a tenderness and a, an insight that the Holy Spirit used to record Mary's part of the story. I'll share later in the book of Matthew, Joseph's, but we'll read this together as well, if you will, beginning on, the, on page 485 at the very be, uh, bottom on the right-hand side of the page. And it came to pass that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus 
that all the world should be taxed. And this, and this, what's the radius? And all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. Someone out from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was there. To be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished, and she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. And they were in the same country, shepherds abiding in the field keeping watch over their flocks. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign to you. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Yeah. I don't know how many times you've read that in your lifetime. I, I would dare say it's been a few times for me. And it never gets old, does it? Hymn number 74 says, away in the manger, no crib for a bed. Would you join me as we sing hymn number 74? <laughs> time Robin is going to zip up here and share a Christmas story with us. She doesn't let me push her around. She's just driving. It's her new wheelchair. So she had to program it real fast so she can outrun me. We haven't tried it out yet. I'm going to give you the microphone.
Okay. That sounds awful bright. <laughs> am, I, am I okay? I feel like I'm echoing. All right. Well, we have one little one that came up. It's because I can't read like this like, you know, the first grade teachers do. And I want to be able to show the pictures. This is a story. We hear about Jesus being born, and we hear about Jesus dying on the cross. And this is a story that sort of combines them both. And I think it's important for our kids to realize how both parts are very important to us. Now, in this story, there's a, the word Jesus. And when I say the name Jesus, you all have to say the name Jesus after me. OK. Grandfather Simeon sat all alone. By the side of his house where the grass hadn't grown. He looked at the ground and he kicked at a stone. He was feeling so lonely, he said with a moan, I think I would cry if I lifted my head. I've heard that the man they call Jesus, Jesus. is dead. Oh, I don't know if they can see it. Simeon, his neighbor, his name was Dan, was a clinkering, clattering pan maker man who clinkered and clattered wherever he ran. Smile, Simeon, what's wrong with you, man? But Grandfather Simeon failed to smile, just said as he looked at a bug for a while, I think I would cry if I lifted my head. I've heard that the man they call Jesus is dead. Now, no one had ever seen Simeon sad, so Dan knew for certain that something was bad. So he clinkered and clattered over to Joel, the baker who knew who was baking a roll. There's something the matter with Simeon, friend. Perhaps we can get him to laugh once again. So back to old Simeon, both of them ran. Joel came first and then clinkering Dan. You should eat something, Simeon. Both of them joked, but Simeon, Simeon never looked up as he spoke. I think I would cry if I lifted my head. I've heard the man they called Jesus is dead. What's the matter, my friend, squeaked a voice from the lane. Can anyone tell me what's wrong or explain? Said the voice which belonged to the tailor named Jove, who was wearing an oversized fluttering robe. Is something a matter with Simeon, friends? Perhaps we can get him to laugh once again. Now, Grandfather Simeon usually was the happiest person they would ever see. But today was unusual that they agreed. As Grandfather Simeon said to the three, I think if I cry, if I lift up my head, I've heard the man they call Jesus, Jesus. is dead. Then each of them, Joel and Job, then Dan, said to each other, let's think up a plan. There's something the matter with Simeon, friends. Perhaps we can get him to laugh once again. But as Joel and Job and then Dan were just thinking, a little girl with round eyes a blinking came bouncing to Grandfather Simeon's knee and said, Grandpa, what bothers you? You can tell me. Oh, Ruth, answered Simeon, bowing his head. I'm so glad you came over to see me, he said, for I think I would cry if I lifted my head. I've heard the man they called Jesus is dead. But why, questioned Ruth, should you worry about this Jesus of whom you know nothing about? 
I'll tell you, said Grandpa, but let's take a walk so we won't be disturbed while we're having this talk. Kissing her nose, then ruffling her hair, Grandfather Simeon rose from his chair, and taking her hand, he began his own story of how he knew Jesus and why he was sorry. And though he thought he would cry if he lifted his head, because the man they called Jesus is said to be dead. A long time ago, in the days of my youth, I guess I was older than you are now, Ruth, I was tending my sheep on a long winter's night, when all of a sudden the sky was so bright that I trembled and blubbered because of my fright. I looked to the sky in amazement to see an angel as wondrous and bright as could be, but with peace in his voice and with love in his eye, he said, peace among men and glory on high. The angel from heaven announced to us then that the Savior, God promised, was born to men. To the city of David, he told us to go and search for a baby in swaddling clothes who was placed in a manger and then we would know we discovered the Savior as God had foretold. Well, I hasten to tell you we ran to the town and searched every building, both upstairs and down, till we spotted the baby, the Savior of all, as the angel had said in an animal stall. We have our little stall right up here. We worshiped the baby and asked for his name. His mother said, Jesus. And he is the same who was killed on the cross for healing the lame and for sharing forgiveness in God's holy name. So I think I would cry if I lifted my head. I know that the baby called Jesus is dead. Oh, Grandpa, said Ruth as she danced at his side. If you give me a two-minute horseback ride, I'll tell you a secret most everyone knows, which will help you to smile as nice as a rose. The Jesus you love and adore isn't dead. He's alive. I saw him, and there's nothing to dread. Ask Peter or John or Salome instead. Jesus of Bethlehem rose from the dead. And you know something, Grandfather Simeon smiled. I heard that he said that the faith of a child would lead us to see him as God after all. And he said he would live again. Now I recall. Then Grandfather Simeon started to dance down the road around trees and some bushes and plants. He lifted his head and he started to sing, He's alive, he's alive. He's alive in the spring. All glory to Jesus, my Savior and King. And remembering how he shouted the truth of Bethlehem birth to his friends, he and Ruth ran back to his house to the three of his friends who thought they could make Simeon so happy again. He announced with a laugh, I have lifted my head. The man they call Jesus, Jesus. is no longer dead. He's alive, he's alive, he's alive in the spring. All glory to Jesus, Jesus. our Savior and King. That was a fast-forward story from the manger to the resurrection. Because Jesus just didn't come to thrill us with the manger, but he came to thrill us with life and life forevermore. Would you stand up, say to your neighbor, I don't need another Christmas cookie, I'm stuffed. 
and greet one another. Will you do that for a moment? Okay, so I'm not afraid. I just want to ask one question. How many of you open up a present tonight? You get to go, okay. How many wait till tomorrow? How many wait till tomorrow night? How many open them up all the time, anytime you can? All right. All right, you may be seated. I want to share with you about uh, Matthew chapter 2. On Sunday I preached about gifts and what can we bring, but uh, the same passage I'd like to do something different, and entitle it, Where is he? As though they lost him. Matthew chapter 2, Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. They said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it was written by the prophet. And now Bethlehem and the land of Judah are not the least among the princes of Judah, for out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people. That's from Micah chapter 5. Then Herod, when he had privately called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child. And when you have found him, bring me word again, that I may come and worship him also. When they departed the king, they depart, uh, when they heard the king, they departed, and lo, the star which they had seen in the east went before them, till they came and stood over where the young child was. And when they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And when they were coming to the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother and fell down and worshipped him. 
And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold, and frankincense, and myrrh. And being warned of a God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Lord, thank you for your word. Thank you for the joy of Christmas. Thank you for caring enough to come to this earth for us. And Lord, we want to just ask that you would work in our hearts today. Like every other day, Lord, may we be drawn closer to you because of Jesus, our Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. The wise men are, we sometimes think there were three, but really we don't know that there were just three. I would think that there were probably more than three guys traveling in their caravan, but they did bring three different kinds of gifts. Gold to indicate that he was royal and, and of royal descent, a frankincense, which was a, a sweet-smelling fragrance, and actually that his whole life would be that before the, the presence of God, and myrrh, which was a burial spice. And so he came to show us who God was, but he did not come, well, he came to live and then he came to die. The wise men, uh, we don't know exactly how they got their information. Apparently, they were astronomers. They were looking, and they, they noticed something unusual in the heaven, and that they thought perhaps it marked something of a great significance. The fact that they traveled in about two years to get there means that the star was sort of way ahead of its time. To get them to the place where they would get to Jerusalem at the right time. It's really fascinating. You know, we don't know their country. We don't know their nationality. Uh, we really don't know how many men and them they were. But we do know that they came on a mission. Where is he that is born king of the Jews? They at least had something figured out, at least a part of it. They got a little, you know, sometimes we had so much, a small amount of information. We, I commend the wise men because what they figured out or what they knew, and I'm sure some had to be brought to them by the presence of the Holy Spirit, or at least an inkling of it. Whatever they got, by faith they responded and they followed. They did, on just a little bit of information, what a lot of us would say, I need more info. I need, I need more data. These guys said, we're going to leave our family, we're going to leave our friends, we're going to take some gifts of great value, and we are going to travel because something great is happening, and certainly it did. Whereas he is born king of the Jews, we have seen his star in the east, we've come to worship him. And really, uh, how we respond to that question, where is he, is so important. Uh, Herod asked the same question, didn't he? He inquired of his wise men and his seers and his prognosticators, his his shamans, uh, he asked him, where is he? But he had a different motive, didn't he? He felt threatened. He saw the usurper to his throne. He saw someone uh, who was maybe trying to take over, and he wanted to eliminate him. We know that it was a terrible time in Israel. Joseph and Mary left and went to Egypt. Herod, so angry, was even concerned about the girls taking over. And he had all the children killed under two. Oh. A couple of weeks ago, I said about the price and the cost of Christmas. And I imagine a lot of the people that were there had no idea the cost that they would pay. One of the things that Herod didn't know was that Jesus' kingdom was not from this world. In fact, he says, you know, Peter, put down the sword. This, my kingdom, that's not what we're about. We're not going to take up the sword like that. Uh, in one sense, Jesus was no rival to Herod. In the other sense, he was a tremendous rival for the people's attention and their priority. But he came to this world not to be a king, but to serve. The scripture says in Luke, he came to seek and save that which is lost. He, he came and took on the form of a servant. And yet there's still enemies that want to try to destroy him and all his work. Herod wants to destroy him and all he stands for. And you know what? If Jesus was destroyed, there would be no peace on earth. Because the Prince of Peace had come. 
I just wonder if more people would embrace the Lord Jesus and say, where is he? And, you know, we, we sing a song at Easter, he lives within my heart. If more people would have that experience that we'd have a greater amount of peace in this world and in our lives. Well, you know, some different kind of people ask this question. Some people who are not believers ask this question uh, maybe because they, they doubt what the shepherds said. The shepherds came in and they're telling everybody about this experience they had with the angels that said, you know, go down and see the baby and, and he's the, the Savior unto you is born this day, a Savior which is Christ the Lord. You know, sometimes even when Jesus is walking around, people sort of scoffed and they didn't believe even who, oh, if you're really the Son of God, get, take yourself off that cross. Isaiah chapter 53, the great suffering servant poem, records for us his prophecy. It says, he, Jesus was, this son of man was despised and rejected of men. And I have to think that there are still scoffers today. Some people who doubt that Jesus was born, that he was the Prince of Peace. If he was really the Prince of Peace, then why don't we have peace? I would submit to you that we could have peace if more people would receive him as their savior. No peace, they say, well, look at, look at, the, look at the people who are elected officials. Look, look how corrupt everything is in our world. You know, and, and the question that many people have is, if the Lord Jesus Christ has really come, how, how has that made a, a difference? Where is he? Some people question you know, it, with the history of revisionism, uh, you know, now they, we don't say, they've now changed it from B.C., before Christ. They say B.C.E., before the common era. And A.D., which was in the year of the Lord. Now they say C.E., that's the common era. Well, the things that made it the common era is the birth of Christ. That's what changed history. <laughs> but they can't say his name for fear they'll have to believe that he really was. We still have scoffers and we have cynics who say, well, you know, Christmas is just a pagan holiday. You know, I saw it at the mall, how much money you spent. I saw you rip that scarf out of the other lady's hand to get that last one. Huh? You know, where is Christ in your Christmas celebration? Some people get excited when they put Xmas as though we're taking Christ out of Christmas. In the Greek verbiage, Christos, it really started with an X. It was, and so when you think about that, or people say happy holidays, I, I often say, thank you for realizing this is a holy day. And that messes them up because they don't want to, they want to say, have a wonderful holiday season. Because we still have people who are sort of cynical and they want to commercialize everything and take Christ out of Christmas. Well, you know, that kind of thing. Some people say, well, maybe he really is and maybe he isn't. And we have this what's in it for me mentality. What's in it for me? What was in it for me that Jesus Christ came to this earth? Well, I can give you a whole laundry list, like how about peace and joy and love and forgiveness? How about forgiveness for sin and having a right relationship? What's in it for me? Why did Jesus come? Not much in it for him except he wanted to reconcile us to God because he loves us. You know, a lot of people want to cash in on all the things about Christmas. I was listening on the radio today and I thought it was really funny. Guy said, yeah, we haven't even finished Christmas and they're putting out the Valentine's Day things. Oh my, terrible thing. We, we started before Thanksgiving and we couldn't even give them a month. Even the commercial people are moving on. That's cynical, isn't it? Because time marches on. Or does it? Has, where is he that was born king of the Jews? Where is he in your relationship, in your heart, in your life? My challenge to you is he's not lost. In fact, he's looking for you. But the question that we ask as believers, or should say the way we look at him, we look at the wise men who came and seek 
or sought him and were seeking him, and they found him. Scripture says, if you seek with me with all your heart, diligently, I will be found. But we're not talking about a baby. We're talking about a risen Savior. We're talking about a completed work. And God looks down at the whole situation because he's not a creature of time. He sees the completed work and he sent his son. But he said, it, he could have almost said at that moment, it's finished because in his mind it was. We are creatures of time. Sometimes it takes us... The Pennsylvania Dutch saying is, we, we get too soon old and too late smart. But you know what? I, I want to be smart in the eyes of God. I do want to get it. Where is he? Well, he, he can be right here. He can be right in my life. He can be in your life. And these men had very little information, these wise men, and yet they were asking the right question. If we're asking the right question, Lord, where are you in this? Do you think he'll hide from us? I don't think so. He came to find us. He's not hiding on us. And we're looking for him. If we put him first and his kingdom first and all the other stuff that we need, Matthew 6.33 will be added unto us. These guys only had one clue and that was a star. And they took a difficult journey because they had a little bit of faith in a big God. You know, you and I are on a journey. It's called life. And you just need a little bit of faith in a big God. And he will lead and guide you by his Holy Spirit now. He has given us his word, and he will lead and guide us. And probably, how can I say, there will be times when you need to rest along the way. I'm sure the, these wise men actually took a nap every now and then, gave the camels a little break. But you know, as we're walking with the Lord through life, he can, will continue to go before us and he will lead us. And you know the best part? These men who followed this star were rewarded. Heaven is a wonderful reward for those who follow the Lord Jesus Christ. Not just now we can have a little bit of down payment, a little bit of heaven on earth. Now we can have the presence of God. But heaven is at the end of our life. And it's a better reward. Eye has not seen nor ear heard. And it hasn't even entered into the heart of men the things that God has prepared for them who love him. See, so they sought him. And they found him. And they fell down and worshipped so you might say, where is he? Well, I just will tell you that he's here. There was a man, and I'll close with this little story, a man who was training his child. And he didn't want his little girl to be a believer because he didn't believe in God. He had been disappointed. He had, he had uh, his heart broken. Things didn't work out the way he wanted in life. And he was sort of bitter. And so he... he Put, made a little sign, and he showed it to his daughter, who was just learning to spell. And he put, God is nowhere. And the little girl went, huh? And he said, now, I'm going to cut up these letters, and I'm going to put them there. And he said, I want you to put, make that sentence for me. Well, as little kids would do, sometimes they put things together, and they put, take them apart. And it says, God is now here. It almost looked the same, but she left enough space the way it read, God is now here. And that's what we're celebrating tonight. Jesus is now here. He's here. And he dwells among us. Where is he? He's right here. And he's as close as the mention of his name. Bow your heads with me for a moment. Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of our Savior, who is now here. And we may have been on a journey looking for him, and not realizing he's here. Like that little girl who maybe didn't understand how or what she had done. But Lord, there are some times when we've been on a search for you and we missed that you're right here. So, Lord, we 
sing the little song where the little kid said, come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Come in today. Come in to stay. Come into my heart and be now here in my life, Lord Jesus. Lord, may we make room for you at this time of our lives at Christmas. May it be more than just a history story. But may it be a present reality. God is now here. He's taken on flesh and dwelt among us. Thank you for coming to here now for me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Stand with me. We're going to sing one last hymn. It says, O come all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. It's in number 78 in your hymnal. Oh, and then the, the end of it says, oh, come, let us adore him. Those guys came and they worshiped him. Well, that's our choice, isn't it? Oh, come, let us adore him. Christ the Lord. Hymn number 78. Oh, come, all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. Oh, come, ye, oh, come, ye to Bethlehem. Come and behold him, born the king of angels. Oh, come, let us adore. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him, Christ the Lord. Sing, choirs of angels, sing in exultation. Oh, sing, all ye citizens of Kev above. Glory to God, all glory in highest. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him, Christ the Lord. Yea, Lord, we greet thee, born this happy morning. Jesus, to thee be a glory gift. Word of the Father, now in flesh appear. Oh, come, let us adore Him. Oh, come, let us adore Him. Oh, come, let us adore Him, Christ the Lord. And may we continue to adore Him. Don't stop worshiping Him. In fact, you can worship Him on the way home. You can worship Him tomorrow. In fact, tomorrow would be a good day to worship him, wouldn't it? And he, you know what, he's still worthy of worship on Friday and Saturday. In fact, when we get together on Sunday, we're going to gather in a worship service. Lord, we thank you for coming to this earth for us. We thank you for the joy of Christmas. Our sins are forgiven. A Savior who is Christ the Lord is born. Thank you for allowing us to be a part of your family. You've given us every good gift. And so, Lord... We thank you for this, a time to celebrate life and celebrate the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Be glorified in my life, I pray, as I adore you. In Jesus' name, amen. Merry Christmas. Bless you.